It was like insane, this place. There was like chicks, good looking dudes. There was drugs. People were smoking. I asked him, I go, hey, do you think it'd be okay if this girl lighted up a vape pen here at our table? He looked at me, he goes, you could shoot a gun in the air. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> um, this is not happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Ooh. 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 Tonight's episode is all about There's not much to say about this legend. You know him as the host of The Price is Right. His name, Drew Carey. This is a real story. It's totally true. I've told it a bunch of times. The guy I'm telling this story about is one of my best friends. He's a comedian, but he doesn't want me to say his name. I know. <laughs> but you'll see why when I tell the story. And he's one of my best friends. So I, I, I go to this music festival every year called the Electric Daisy Carnival. I know you're sh probably like, fucking what? <laughs> Drew Carey goes to the electric, yes. And uh, so I'm really excited. And, and I, I hadn't been to the ED, I hadn't been to EDC yet. But I've heard about it. I've only been seeing DJs in clubs and stuff like that. My friends were like, oh, if you're into this, you really got to go to EDC. That's the best thing to go to. So like four years ago, it's, this will be five years now, I go, yeah, that's great. So I went to EDC with my friend. And uh, all my friends there, they're all doing drugs except me. Because I'm the host of Price is Right. <laughs> But it's all about my friend and his, 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 his drug use. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Red EDC, my friend takes LSD and Molly. Uh, Molly is a drug people take to get really happy. LSD is a psychedelic. And uh, so he took LSD and Molly, and then later on, he, he smoked weed, and that's, he says, what set him off. <laughs> I, just, I just had a text exchange with him confirming the drugs that he took, because I just thought, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was mushrooms, or, but it was definitely LSD and Molly, and then he smoked weed. And then I, I had a date uh, at, at EDC, which is kind of a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> But not really, it's a good place to be. Um, but she drank a little bit, so she got sick. And it doesn't get over till like six in the morning. It goes from dusk till dawn in Vegas at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. There's like 110,000 people a night just raging and partying and dancing. And uh, I wanted to stay till dawn because it was my first night there. And, uh, but she got sick, so I look at my friend. I almost said his name. I looked at my friend. <laughs> And I go like, hey man, we gotta get out of here. She just got sick. And I know we got about an hour to go, but you know, sun's coming up, might as well hit it. And he goes, what? W what'd I do? <laughs> and I go, you didn't do anything, man. We just, we just gotta get out of here. She just got sick and we're gonna get back to the hotel. And he goes, oh, I fucking knew it, man. <laughs> fucking knew it, man. I go, what's wrong? He goes, ah, oh, fucking, this is how it's gonna go, right? <laughs> I'm supposed to go back with you and leave with you? I'm just supposed to go with you? I go, yeah, we're gonna get in the van. I'm getting everybody else here. And I tell everybody else in our group, we're gonna go. It's just a few of us left, like five, six of us. We're getting in the van, we're gonna get out of here. She's sick, we're gonna get back, it's only now. Fuck, I've done some terrible things in my life, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a breakdown and he won't stop. And finally I convince him, like, come on, let's go. We're gonna be okay. And he goes, okay, fuck, I'm supposed to go with you. That's how it's gonna be, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> and we're walking out and I got my arm around him and he's really upset. And he just keeps saying about all the terrible things he's done in his life and how he deserves it and how this is how it's probably going to go. He thought we were going to kill him. And I was trying to get him out of there and get him in the van so we could fucking kill him. <laughs> and 
And everywhere I was leading him, he was like, oh, I'm supposed to go with you, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> And I finally, at one point, I finally got him settled down. And we, we had two guys from uh, Dancing with the Stars. I'd just been on Dancing with the Stars. So these two guys, I finally, get, I finally get him settled down. We're like, no, it's fine. Listen, we love you, man. We're going to get you back. It's going to be fine. Just going to wait for the van. The van took forever to get there. Just going to wait for the van. And uh, then we'll get out of here. And he's like, okay, fine. He finally settled down. And I looked at the two guys from Dancing with the Stars. They're all buff and muscly. And I go, but first, we're going to fuck you up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> And the Dancing with the Stars guys start laughing. And I snicker and he's like, what are you laughing at? What's going on? I go, it's, it's okay, relax. Then he was all upset again. I couldn't calm him down. We get him in the van. We're, we're, we're driving back to the MGM. We're standing at the MGM. It's the sun's up. This is like seven in the morning now. We've been there since six o'clock at night. Partying and raging. And my friends are doing tons of drugs. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I'm the host of Price is Right. <laughs> so uh, we get in the van, the van on the radio, the, the radio starts playing Hotel California by the Eagles. You can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. <laughs> and the song comes on, he goes, What the fuck is that? It's a relax, it's a song, don't worry about it. We get out of the van, he's like, I gotta get out of here, man. This is bad. And he starts walking away, like wandering out into the valet. And I gotta grab him, I go, hey dude, you can't just wander off, security's gonna arrest you. You're gonna be in big trouble, man. Let's just get out of here, let's just get, we go through the lobby and he's like this, I'm, you know, I'm holding him and my, my date's like, ugh, she's not feeling good. We get through the lobby and we see like a guy with his family checking out by the candy section in the middle by the elevators. And it's like, like I said, like 6.30, 7 in the morning, and this, it's the husband, the wife, the kid, and the husband's like this, and the wife is like this, and the kid's like, ugh. And he goes, what the fuck are those people? <laughs> <laughs> They're just checking out, just ignore them, let's go. We get the elevator. We take him to my room because uh, we got a suite and there's a couch, and I go, I'm not gonna let you be alone, man. Just come up to my room, put him on the couch, you know, get him a blanket. Like, okay, we're going to bed. So we get, in the, we, get in our, we get in the bedroom. I look at my date and I go, hey, man, you'd actually be pretty easy to kill if we wanted to kill him. Because <laughs> he really wasn't putting up much of a fight. Like, he was like this, but he wasn't going, motherfuckers are trying to kill me. Like, he wasn't, you know, <laughs> like I would do. <laughs> he wasn't screaming. He was like, oh, I fucking got to go with you, right? And this is how it's going to go. That's how he was the whole time. Convinced we were going to kill him. I get him to sleep. Next day he's gone, but we're, we're, uh, the World Cup is on. So uh, we go watch the World Cup, uh, World Cup game down at the sports bar, and he ch shows up because he's going to drive home that day. And I go, how are you feeling? He goes, fine. I'm really sorry about last night. I go, don't worry about it. And uh, the game's going on, and finally, in the middle of his meal, he goes, why is everybody talking about me? <laughs> I, go, I go, nobody's talking about you, man. We're just all having lunch here. And he goes, oh, man. He goes, I think I broke my brain. <laughs> That's a direct quote. I think I broke my brain, man. This is really bad. <laughs> nobody's talking about me, right? And I go, nope, nobody. I'm just going to go. So he leaves and he drives home. I, I hear from him like, hey, man, you okay? And he says, yeah, I'm fine. A couple days later, he texts me and he goes, hey, I'm really sorry. You know, I just can't, I guess I'm, you know, I can't do drugs anymore. And I go, okay. So three months later, <laughs> we go to another music festival called Tomorrow World. That's down in Atlanta and it's in the woods and everybody camps. And um, we took a private jet there. We took a private jet. We're at a VIP area with like a, uh, you know, a, like a tour bus thing where everybody's sleeping. Like we're doing it deluxe at this. Everybody else is in a fucking tent. <laughs> Not me, man. We got private jet and everything. So everybody goes and we're dancing and stuff and having the greatest time. And he took a bunch of mushrooms. And uh, I go back to where our campsite is. And he's on the bus with my other friend who's a comic. And I hear my other friend going, nah, man, everybody loves you. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and I walk up in the thing, because I'm about to go and split and see this girl I know that works downtown. I go, I go, are you fucking kidding me? I go, I see it. That's what I said. I wasn't even, I didn't feel bad for her. I go, are you fucking kidding me? He's doing this again? And he looks up and he goes, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's all too good. <laughs> 
private jet, VIP. This is not, something's going to happen, man. I just feel it. <laughs> so I sat down for like a half hour. We talked to him. We tell him how much everybody loves him, how great he is, what a beautiful person we think he is. Like, he really is the nicest guy in the whole world. And um, I wish I could say his name, but he's bullshit and chickening out about um. <laughs> Well, you can see why he doesn't want <laughs> what's going on. Now that I'm telling you the story. Um, so I get, finally talk him down. The next day, it's during the day. Next day, he goes, hey, man, thanks for talking to me. He's bright-eyed. He's standing upright. He goes, thanks. That was like 10 years of therapy. I feel great today. And he did. He's standing a little taller. His eyes were clear. And we partied that Friday night like we never partied before. It was like insane, this place. There was like chicks, good-looking dudes. There was drugs. People were smoking. I asked him, I go, hey, do you think it'd be okay if this girl lighted up a vape pen here at our table? He looked at me, he goes, you can shoot a gun in the air. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> the table next to me, they had mushrooms at the table out in a container, and the bottle service girl was like chewing mushrooms out of the fucking, it was like crazy. They had mushroom statues all over the campgrounds. Like this was not a drug, they were like, they were like, yeah, fuck, do drugs. We don't care at this place. They went bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> They're not around anymore. As I can tell you anything about this. It was just insane. It was like this, the best weekend of my life. So, partied all day Friday. Partied all day Saturday. On Sunday, it's nighttime. And they're like dropping confetti from helicopters. You know, there's like, I met another really cute chick there. And I'm really like, who's my best friend now? And uh, a guy comes over to me and he goes, hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I work for the festival. I would like to take you on a private helicopter ride above the festival. I go, what the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> this is like 8 o'clock Sunday night. He goes, he goes, yeah. I go, can I take anybody with me? And he goes, yeah, I can take two more people. And I go, okay, I'm going to take her. <laughs> then I point to my friend, and I'm going to take him. He was over there dancing. He had a hat on. And uh, <laughs> he had a stupid Budweiser cowboy hat. <laughs> Just dancing away, you know. And uh, joint in his mouth, Budweiser hat. I mean, you know, it was one of those things. Packed. So I go to her, she's dancing on the couch. I go, hey man, we're gonna take a helicopter ride. Okay, cool. Then I go up to him and I go, hey man, guess what? He goes, what? He's all super happy. He'd been great all weekend. No problems at all, even with the drugs. And I go, hey man, some guy just wants to give me a private helicopter ride and he said I could take somebody, so we're going on a helicopter ride above the festival. He goes, what the fuck? <laughs> he goes, are you kidding me? And I go, no. And he gives me a big hug and he goes, oh man, that's great. Why me? And I go, because you're one of my best friends, man. And that's the helicopter we're going to drop you out of. <laughs> Three month callback, motherfuckers. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I was like so happy with myself. <laughs> And he's a comic, too, so he was like, yeah, that was a good one three months later. <laughs> and then we got off, we were, like, crying, hugging each other, telling how much we loved each other. And it was honestly, like, now he's fine. He just didn't want me to mention, you know, his name when I told the story. But, but if you're listening to this, I love you. Thanks for letting me tell the story, and uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Bye. <laughs> True care, y'all.